Hello, everybody. This is Tony Turner, and welcome to the market now as of Friday, October 9th, at about 12.45 p.m. Eastern. Well, Wall Street's main indexes opened up today, setting up the S&P 500 and the Dow for their second straight weekly gain on hopes of more federal fiscal aid. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on that note, let's go on to three charts that could give us some insight into the week to come. First of all, as we usually do, we're going to take a look at the daily chart of the S&P 500 index, ETF, the SPY. As you all know, this is the tracking ETF that closely follows, again, our S&P 500 benchmark index. So today, the SPY, if you can see on this chart, it gapped up the last two days in the row, uh, both Thursday and today. And when I captured this chart, the SPY was trading at $346.69, or about $34.66 on the S&P 500 itself. Now, it is trading nicely at this point above the green line, the 50-day moving average, and the red line, the 20-day moving average. Now, as you remember, it made a new, brand new all-time closing high uh, back in September at $357.70 or 3577 on the S&P 500. So after it made that all-time high at 357, it then dipped down. Uh, it slid down to about $320 or 3200 on the S&P. Then it caught uh, I caught support here, actually some price support from before, and started back up and did a great job of jumping back up above this all-time 50-day moving average, which is rising, and that's a good thing, and back above the 20-day, although the 20-day now is below the 50-day. It's not by much, and if the SPY can keep rising as it's doing so, uh, of course, that 20-day moving average will cross back up above the 50-day moving average. Now, we aren't yet overbought on the RSI. Down here, you see the RSI on this, um, on this scale here. It's only up at 60, which is a good thing. We don't want it to get overbought again yet, because sometimes, as we know from August, the overbought RSI can be kind of a dubious signal, and sometimes the sellers come in at that point. So everything looks good here. The MACD is moving perfectly on the 50 line. So this is, this is a good place to be right now. Now, again, as you all know, October is historically, a, is, is, is usually a kind of a rocky month. Um, but we do have November, December, and January, which are usually the three months of the year. Uh, my, my take on this is if the, R, the SPY can just remain above that 50-day moving average, especially as we move into earnings season and the election, uh, if it can stay above this, uh, it, at least it can stay up above the 50-day line, maybe uh, trade in a range here, or who knows, even possibly move up and move back over that all-time high. Still in all, we've got a lot going on in this country right now, and I would, uh, I would think it's wise to keep your protective stops in place. And again, don't forget that er third quarter earnings season does start next week when the banks start announcing earnings. Our next chart is a chart of the Invesco QQQ. As you all know, this represents the NASDAQ 100, major, major index in the stock market with the uh, top large cap momentum stocks and tech leaders uh, guiding the QQQ along. And of course, I'm talking about Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Facebook, that whole group. Now, when I captured this chart today, the QQQ was trading at $285.21. As you all know, it touched a new all-time uh, closing high on September 2nd at $302 up here in 76 cents. Then it slid down to 260 uh, made a little teeny tiny double bottom here and then rallied back up over its 50-day moving average. Now, as with on the SPY, this continuation pattern here, that's what it turned into, is actually a very positive one. Uh, those of you who know head and shoulders patterns can identify a very small inverse head and shoulders pattern here. Now, there are no guarantees, but when 
price rises up above the neckline of an inverse head and shoulders, that can be uh, that can be a very bullish, <laughs> excuse me, a very bullish accent action. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it here uh, and and see what happens. Um, now the S, the uh, QQQ is right now only six percent below uh, that prior all time high. So that's a good thing. So let's, in the coming week, keep an eye on the QQQ and uh, fingers crossed it stays above the 50-day moving average right here. And of course, keep your protective stops in. Our last chart today is a chart of the ETFMG, Prime Cybersecurity ETF, the HACK. The HACK, we'll call it HACK today, has 57 holdings. Some of the top holdings include Cisco, Cloudflare, Cloudflare, Splunk, and Palo Alto Networks. Now, when I captured this chart today, the hack was trading at $49.03. It made an all-time recent, it made an all-time closing high on September 2nd at $50.95. Uh, and uh, then... Um, it, it's, it, it moved back down with the rest of the market, kind of did what the rest of the market did, struggled around here below its 50-day moving average, again, the green line, then popped back up, and not totally unlike the QQQ, um, gap back up here, and then moved up to once again mount and move over its 50-day moving average. Now, what am I looking at here that may add to my... Uh, positivity about the hack right now. Look down with me. Look down at volume. Volume is always another opinion. Volume's over and uh, always another opinion because look here. If you see rising volume, and you can see it on this chart, if you can see rising volume and the price is moving up at the same time, then you know the simple fact there are more buyers than sellers. And if we compare that volume to prior volume, we can see that it, it is indeed a move up. Uh, so it is indeed some interested buyers. Now, how long it will last, I don't know, but it certainly propelled the HACK higher here. Uh, now, this, this ETF doesn't, doesn't uh, move on extremely high volume at all. This isn't a day trading um, this isn't a day trading ETF. As you can see, the volume in it today is only at about almost 82,000 shares. That's not a lot, but it still does move and it still is orderly. And that's what I want. So um, if the hack HACK can remain positive into the coming week, and if the market remains reasonably calm, the market itself, I may add a position of hack to my portfolio I will place my initial stop at $46.25, and that's right below this 20-day moving average, the, the red line, and it's right below this, this little nudge down here and back up, making it potential support. So potential st or my stop here at $46.25, and if or when the HACK breaks above that prior all-time closing high, breaks above 51 I may add uh, more shares to my position. And of course, before that, I will have turned my stop into a trailing stop. So you may want to keep an eye on the HACK during the coming week. And now, before we go on to final thoughts, please know that if you would like to invest in yourself, and become a better trader, which is actually a very good idea right now, <laughs> this is the perfect time to check out my trader training programs. You will discover my simple yet powerful strategies devoted to swing trading, trend trading, bottom fishing, and much more. And these strategies will help you increase your gains quickly and easily. To see all of the programs, go to the link on this screen right down here or simply click on the orange button below. And now on for my final thoughts today, we're going to ask a question we do many times. The question this week is, do you expect to make predictable profits from every single trade you make? Do you expect to make predictable profits? 
Please know that traders set themselves up for failure when they say and when they expect to make predictable profits from each and every trade they make. Uh, one of the worst things a trader can think is, and I heard this over and over again when I started trading, I have to make $500 today to make my car payment. Please don't think like that. To maximize profits, we must not place expectations on a single trade or even on a group of trades. The markets trend and volatility ebb and flow. The markets ebb and flow and the, is, is, and the, and, and the trend, when I'm getting it mixed up here, but the market's trend and its volatility are the main dynamics of the market. So to the market's pattern on any given day, you add your pattern, you add your knowledge, you add your discipline, your expertise. And when you overlay your pattern on top of the market's pattern, the combination of those two factors decide your profits. Far too many traders develop trading plans that are supposed to earn a fixed amount of money on a predictable basis. Then the traders are disappointed because it simply doesn't work that way. Please don't try to predict your profits or try to assign expected profits to a time slot. Your goal is to become a consistently winning trader over time. Your goal is to earn more money than you lose. The more proficient you become at choosing promising stocks and ETFs, the more you stay on the right side of the market, and the more discipline you exhibit, the more successful trades you will make and the more money you will take home. Okay, remember what I always say, Trade to trade well, not to make money. When you trade to trade well, you, the money will happen. Okay, finally, if you want to become a consistently winning trader, please check out our easy to learn, uh, powerful online trading programs that will help you increase your trading profits from now on. From swing trading to bottom fishing to trend trading and more, just click on the orange button below for more info. Until next week, keep green on your screen. I'm Tony Turner, and this is The Market Now.